Black Wall Street is now online, baby. That's right. Visit the GW District. Shop the very best in men's and women's apparel and accessories, home decor, office supplies, books, pantry items, and so much more. The GW District is a retail marketplace of black-owned products and media. We're both veteran and black-owned, and we're bringing you the best online shopping experience with products made by small businesses. Come and experience the GW District difference today at shopgwdistrict.com. That's shopgwdistrict.com. The GW District, a retail marketplace of black-owned products and media. That's right. That's right. Okay, we're back. I want to tell you what's so funny. I don't ever check to see if anybody ever followed me on Anchor, right? So I didn't realize y'all was following me. I could have seen the invite. Yeah, because the problem is the link is opening like on my phone on Twitter. But then as soon as I got a Twitter notification, it wants to kick me out of the recording. So now this is safe. Yes, yes. See, I didn't realize that, well... I was just so used to doing it through the Twitter and stuff, and yeah. not everybody like follow me on Anchor. Oh yeah, you know, no, no. I did, a, I did a podcast with someone else like a month ago, so I learned the app really quickly. See, yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. See, yes, listeners, that, that what happens is is when you do something, you learn something, it, it sticks with you. You know, uh-huh. exactly, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so now we we trying this again, listeners. So. I am here with because uh, normally I don't let nobody know your names until after I do my particulars. So um, it, I heard a lot about y'all, you know. Period, and I've been seeing a lot of you, uh, of you too. And it, what is interesting is that you is what I've been talking about on my podcast in so many ways: a married, powered porn couple. Mm-hmm. Because y'all check the boxes for that title, so y'all deserve it. I'm giving you your damn roses. <laughs> Thanks. Thank okay? you. So I don't want to hear no humbleness like, no, that's not us. I don't know. Nah, <laughs> bullshit. God dang it. Y'all putting in work out there. So now the question I got to ask is this because, like, my, my podcast, we talk about it all on it. It's just with porn stars, we have for the most part. We're going to start with this. What makes a, success, a successful marriage? Oh, man. Uh, coming in with the hard-hitting questions right off the bat, huh? See, I like starting off hot before I do my particulars. Hey, you know, I, to get I, everybody warmed up. You know I, what I'm saying? I feel you. I mean, my general answer is that, um, you know, I, I would say it's pretty easy. Uh, she's right. <laughs> And when people ask me about what, that, that you know, everything. Yeah. I would tell you what my mama told me. When she's right, she's right. When she's wrong, she's right. Exactly. <laughs> see? That's how it goes. And, it, and that is so true because no matter how much that we as men are dominant, the women runs the marriage. Let's just be frank. It's, oh, yeah. yeah it's about making her happy and because if she's not, if mama not happy, nobody's happy. Hey, happy wife, happy life. It's not a saying for no reason, you know? You ain't never lied on that one. So let me do these part tickets and we can get this thing jumping, okay? Sure. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Smokers Lounge here on Anchor, the perfect app for anyone who's trying to start their own podcast career. All you got to do is download the Anchor app. Or go to anchor.fm and get a profile and start podcast today. I'm your host, Kevin Alvin Southern Champ, a.k.a. The Porn Rap Star. You know what it is. Find all my links with one link, allmylinks.com backslash porn rap star. We have three wonderful hosts to tell you about. The first one being the Facebook the LS community, lsworld.com. Next up is eroticismmagazine.com. Go there today and get yourself a monthly subscription. Get it paperback or digital. And last but not least, and black-owned, excitebunny.com for you content creators. 90% profit that you take home. Plus, they even offer healthcare. Just a little tidbit. And for you fans that or I like to call consumers, a new place for you to get good content. So go to excitebunny.com and catch that smoke. 
And we are a proud member of the GW District Black Podcasting Network. I'm talking about multiple podcasts. Give you the black experience. Plus, go to shopgwdistrict.com and get the opportunity to buy products from over 500 black-owned retailers and shops. And last but not least, check me out on skyhawkafterdarktv.com. Catch me on my personal page or on the radio station. Either way, catch that smoke. Now, I'm going to shut up and let this power couple introduce themselves. Oh, goodness. I'm Suzanne Ferrari. And I'm Dan Ferrari. Yes, and they are a wonderful porn couple. So how long have y'all been married, if you don't mind me asking? 19 years. 19 years. So how did y'all meet? We grew up together. In oh. a small town in New York. Yeah. So. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So y'all basically uh, soulmates, high school sweethearts per se. Uh, Pretty much, yeah. Basically. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! So, um, as y'all became married, what made y'all decided to drift into porn? Um, we were married probably 13, 14 years before. Well, okay, yeah, probably, so probably closer to ten years. Before, no, yeah, before you started doing porn. Oh, doing porn, yeah, about thirteen, fourteen years. Yeah, so we were very secure in our marriage, very secure in our relationship, and the opportunity presented itself. And I think we're pretty good communicators. Yeah. So absolutely. it kind of just worked out. Most definitely. So, what steps did y'all take? to get into the business because I know that I, how long y'all been in the business so far? You know what I mean? We've been making our own porn for four years, but we've been working in the industry for 10 years. Yeah, uh, yeah, most definitely. So so that means y'all came in around a time where porn was a little bit more guarded than what it is now. So, especially with the information, how to get into the business, what to do, you get in the business, the whole night. So what steps did you guys take to step into the business uh to be honest we kind of just fell into it um uh, what we, we moved to, well we moved to california yeah, we, we moved that to was california, the key thing and, uh, <laughs> yeah I, I had a friend who was working for uh for a major director and he needed someone to come help him out on set he was like hey i want to make 100 bucks a day see naked girls and i was a broke musician so i was like 100 bucks a day you could have stopped there you know so I just I started working with him, and then uh, then the rest is history. I just we just kept it going. I I brought Suzanne in uh, shortly after that to help out on set as well, and we just kept it rolling. So, when you mean help out on set, what do you mean? So, uh, so my understand my viewers can understand, my listeners can understand. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so basically, uh, I was I I was and uh, every once in a while, I still do some work as a production assistant on sets. Uh, okay. uh, just basically. Doing paperwork, doing lighting, uh, putting the set together, moving furniture, mo- moving furniture, mm-hmm. greeting the models, making sure the models are comfortable, all that sort of thing. And then Suzanne, mm-hmm. I brought her in as a, a production manager since she is the uh, smartest person I know. So, so I was handling like bookings, legal paperwork, paying people that type of thing. So, so y'all started behind the scenes before y'all even got in front of the camera. Exactly. Yep. So, um. Before we even get to y'all getting in front of the camera, what skills did y'all take from that? Because y'all were doing that for someone else that you applied to your own. That's the thing. I think by working for other people, we learned all of the ins and outs as far as the technical aspect, all the legal aspects of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. is really the key because, you know, you have to make sure you have paperwork for everything. And, and then for my, for myself, for the performing side of it, uh, um, you know, I, I a lot of camera awareness, just on, you know, knowing that the camera mm-hmm. there, how, how to how to position myself so the camera gets the best angles, how to how to be in the scene and and have it be captured the way that it needs to be captured. You know, mm-hmm. I, I I usually say it's kind of like driving a car. Before you drive a car, you kind of know how to do it because you've been watching it be done for so long. You know. Yeah, because I think uh, one time I never even told this story. Uh, I had an opportunity to be to be a male talent way before I was a male talent. But I turned it down because it, it was it, it was going to be, I think, a three-man game bang by was in it. Oh, yeah. And, and I sat there and watched it, what have you. It just, um, how they were filming it or or what have you. And it's kind of like it 
even though it was like two years prior to when I actually started, I took that. Plus, also, I was a photographer prior. So it's like being behind the camera, it shows you angles and also make you take into account for even getting in front of the camera. Exactly. Positioning in the whole nine, you know, period. So it's iron sharp as iron, per se. You know, period. So from there, when did it, when did y'all go from I'm behind the camera to, okay, now I'm doing, ta- I'm being talented? Uh, what was that, like six years after I, I became a production assistant? Yeah, so like Dan and I were on vacation in Mexico in this gorgeous pool in Puerto mm-hmm. Vallarta. And he goes to me, um, I think I want to start performing. And of course, he said it to me like, we're on a tropical vacation. I'm in a great mood. I can't say no. <laughs> so it just kind of, we, we went from there. We started very slowly. Um, content with friends content with ours. friends, yeah. like people we really trusted and knew, because you know, for a couple, it's very scary when sex isn't a shared intimate thing; it becomes more of a public thing. So we really took a lot of baby steps at the beginning, just so my comfort was kept in check, <laughs> and then it just kind of grew from there. Yeah. So it was like, um, because basically it was, y'all basically just used the the people around y'all at first. And then when did y'all started to actually drift into the point industry itself? You know, period, dealing with other professionals, you know, period, because... Um, well, with that, because we'd worked in the industry for so long, we were working with professionals. Yeah. One of the first scenes we shot oh, was yeah. uh, with our friend Lisey Sweet. That was the first scene. Ooh. Yeah, that was the first scene. Because we were friends off camera, like she was one of the people we would go have brunch with or whatever. <laughs> and she's a very sexual person yeah, to begin yeah. with, so for her it was like, yeah, let's do this. That was my first scene. Yeah, it like, was your first scene, and Lisey's husband and I both shot video for that because I was yeah. still I was still learning video. And then the, the beginning, I think it, who, who else do we shoot with? Like Violet Monroe, yeah. Gia Page. Yeah. People that we were friends with, but they're, I mean, they're huge porn stars. So, so was it just him shooting with them or was it you and him taking turns or no, what have you? No, just Dan. I'm, just I'm behind the camera. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So, so Wabby was filming where, 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 where Daddy was getting it on. Exactly. So when did Wabby jump into the mix? So I only recently started getting in front of the camera like two or three months ago. Mm-hmm. But I still am not getting naked on camera. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just it, a tease. I'm a tease. Okay, I was going to say, so are you doing full-blown boy-girl, or is it just like fetish, or... So Dan is shooting boy-girl, and I'm filming it, so it's cut queen fetish, so it's, you know, the, okay. whole, the whole experience is they're having sex with my husband in front of me. And then mm-hmm. I've been doing some uh, assisted masturbation scenes with some of the models we shoot with, so, like, I use toys on them, or I fist them. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. It's it's kind of along the lines of a uh, BDSM to a certain extent. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's just not not rough. It's, yeah, not full blown, but you get what I'm saying. It's yeah. like it's gentle femdom. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm getting so really it, good at fisting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will tell you what's funny. That's a money maker. That, 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 that's one that sells. You know, period. And and I'm sorry, it's just like me as a male talent. I know that I, I got some girls, but I'm like, depends on the fish that she takes. I'm like, I don't know if I can do anything for her, man. <laughs> dude, the dude is like 72. <laughs> right. No, fish, fish is wild. Two, my, and she just took that like it was nothing. Uh-huh. No, we're not shooting. I, I don't think I can do nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so, um, how does it? How can I put this? So he's it, it's this is the dynamic. I love this dynamic. He's the male talent, and yeah. she is the fetish. She's the fetish film dog. Okay, so, um, was this something that was just planned out? Did it happen organically? You know, because it's kind of like y'all, it feel like y'all accidentally expanded your brand 
and your repertoire is without realizing it to a certain extent. Yeah, it kind of happened by accident because yeah, yeah. Um, it was what we were actually into, and it was along with our comfort levels. Like, mm-hmm. you wanted to get naked, I didn't. So, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, I think it, it was like by accident. It just happened. Mm-hmm. That is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, as bosses, um, how do y'all run y'all set? So, like I said, we, we shoot mostly cut clean. So, we yeah. have our f- models come over to our apartment. We hang mm-hmm. out, go over what they're into, what they're not into. Do's and don'ts. You got to, like, go over the consent, uh, do the paperwork, mm-hmm. you know, lighting. Uh, uh, we discuss what kind of content uh, we will be shooting, you know, if it's trade, what works for them, what works for us, you know. And then, yeah, so we normally, if we're shooting boy-girl, we normally mm-hmm. shoot and try not to cut at all. Yeah. So, but that's because we also know that, like, we tell the models, of course, they can cut. But the flow is just we let what happens happen organically. Like, we don't cut. And that, that's the best way to film, if you ask me. They, yeah. like, stop and start shit. It's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> yeah. We don't cut and say, okay, we need this certain position. We don't care about that. We don't care about porn performance. We care about good <clears throat> sex. Yeah, it, it, and if, if something funny happens and we start laughing, we leave it in because, you know, it's real people it's like natural. sex, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so what's some of the things that y'all do to help the model relax and become comfortable to get the best work out of her? You know, period, because we know as producers and talent, whether you're a woman or a man, you, you kind of have to help them get in the mood, not in the mood, is in like you mess with me and like that, not that, but you know, comfortability because of them being on camera to get the best out of them, for the best atmosphere, per se. Yeah, usually, I mean, we're you know, we're having them in our place, so it feels very comfortable. Like, we just mm-hmm. had um, we had a model come over last night, and when she walked in, she was like blown away by how like cute the vibe is. like. Yeah. It's it's very girly. I said I should decorate it like an Airbnb. It's very pink, very welcoming, you know, very soft. We're not t- we're not taking them to like a shoot house or a hotel where it's like not personal. It's very personal. So when they walk in, they they feel that vibe. Um, we have a lot of models that come over that just want to hang out and have cats because we have three cats. <laughs> emotional support animals on set right? that's immediately an icebreaker you know um, oh, yeah, then, oh, yeah. yeah basically I think having me there is also mm. very different like if Dan yeah. was shooting content without me which he has done and that's, yeah. that's successful mm. it's a very different vibe than having another yeah. woman there yeah but I mean but at the same token you make it make them feel okay it's okay to fuck Dan. I'm yes, not yes. that. that, that I'm not going to sit behind camera hoping to punch you in the face because you made him come so hard. <laughs> no, I tell. I, we have to tell yeah. them specifically not to hold back because there's been people who are like, as we walk them to their car, they'll be like, oh, I was afraid I was going to upset Suzanne. It's like, no, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I, I, I always tell them there's nothing that we can do that's going to upset Suzanne. Just to, like, to make them feel comfortable because... It is a situation that a lot of people haven't been in, you know, having sex with someone in front of their significant other, you know, it's an interesting dynamic. Yeah, and because even with me, I've done scenes in front of husbands and <laughs> and, and the whole nine, and it did not bother me one bit because I was like, if dude didn't want me to fuck her, I don't think he would have brought her over here. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and if he gets in his feelings, that's between him and her. They ain't got shit to do with me. I would dare to do my job. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's a job, and it's the super. It's a super fun job, but it's it's, it's a job. You know, we're we're there to do. You know, we're there to make content. We're gonna have a great time, and uh, you know, there, there's no need for any jealousy or any uh, uh, you know, bad emotions to come into that. Yeah. Now, do you think because she's downset? As well as y'all working together, do you think it cuts out a lot of foolishness that might go down in porn? You know what I'm saying? Every now and then. People getting in their feelings. Uh, all that bullshit. I think 
I think people. Okay, so I think single people in porn get mm-hmm. they get to attach to the people they're having sex with sometimes. Mm-hmm. But because we've been married so long, there's it's just there's no there's no attachment, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no. What I mean is, with you being there, like of course being on set, what have you, that makes the girl not be attached to her. Right. She it kind of it kind of makes her say. Ain't no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it ain't happening. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, cause, cause Just they, enjoy the dick. <laughs> yeah, because they they know it's it's not it's not like a uh, it's not a hookup. It, it's. It's a, a fun content exchange, you know. We're we're just making content, and uh, you know, at the end of it, I'm not going to be like, "Hey, why don't you hang out and let's uh, let's maybe go out to dinner or something?" You know, like like when I'm done, I'm like, "Okay, like we we did our thing. That was super fun. Come come back anytime, and uh, my wife and I are going to enjoy the rest of our evening now. See you later." Yeah, it, it, you know, because even to me, I felt that me being married in the game grounded me a whole lot because sometimes these single dudes get their ass in trouble. So yeah. <laughs> they get they fill it in the content houses and shit and yeah and this is a business you can't you got to be able to separate personal exactly from, from yeah business. you can't you can't use making porn like a dating service yeah because people don't realize and I want y'all to speak to that the mental aspect of it mm-hmm. because you have to have a because it's there's physical prep and then there's mental prep. And the mental right. prep is a totally different levels. For Dan, because I know he works in front of the camera, speak to the mental prep before you do scenes. Uh, you know, the mental prep is just uh I, I just uh you know, working out, which is the physical prep also does help me yeah. it, the med- that does help my mentality. Uh but just I just try to stay relaxed, uh listen to some music, just just kind of, you know. Ha- have as little stress come into my head as possible prior to a scene, you know, just, just go into it with a very calm demeanor, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because if, because I'm a big proponent of energy. Yeah. So, and the, the, it's a perfect, it's, it's a perfect waltz. I call it a perfect waltz right. between the cameraman and the two talents, you right. know what I'm saying? And, the two talents have to be in sync with each other and be able to dance with each other, you know, period. And also be able to read the room with each other in a lot of way, in a lot of cases. Oh, absolutely. So it's so people don't realize that is actually hard, especially if it's somebody that you just meeting for the first time or someone that you haven't really worked with a lot, you know, period. So um with that being said, with that, that segue, <laughs> with that segue, how do you pick the ladies that y'all work with? What most do they have to bring to the table? What is their criteria and so forth? Honestly, most of what we shoot is content treats. So we just look for people that want to shoot with us. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it's people that enjoy sex, that want that like what we're doing, that are turned on by the whole fetish, mm-hmm. and that, that want to work with us. So shoot, so y'all don't necessarily contact girls. Girls contact y'all. What con- we, well, I mean, I reach out to some people. It's kind of mm-hmm. mutual, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because what makes you reach out to them? That's that's the question I'm asking. Um. Well, I mean, sometimes some. I mean, I'll see like oh, someone retweet someone that you know I find physically attractive, or I think Dan will find physically attractive. So. If I know that's so cool, types. she picking the women for her man. Yes. God, oh, yes. Yes. this men around America listen to this damn podcast saying he just got a wonderful wife. Please keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if I see someone that I think is Dan's type, then I know he'll be super turned on. So he'll do a better scene. And when when I reach out to the models and they they see our content, they and they are excited about the whole aspect of me being there. Then I know it's going to be a great scene because they're going to be super turned on. Dan's going to be super. Turned on. Mm-hmm. And I do think most of the people we shoot with are more turned on by the fact that I'm there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So y'all really don't necessarily look at Twitter following. Oh so, no. You know, you know, you know their uh, their resume per se. No, and we're we're pretty open to diverse casting. We yeah. shoot with a mm-hmm. lot of. I would say a lot of models that other mainstream producers won't shoot with. Like you'll see a lot of bigger women on our set, mm-hmm. which you don't mm-hmm. see. You don't see that in a lot of places. Now, with that being said, <clears throat> excuse me. So with that being said, how has the fan base reacted 
to your style. You feel they, me? They love it. Yeah, we keep adding great. different things. Very positive. Because we just we just relaunched the site into a bunch of different niches. So like it was mm-hmm. just slut inspection. Now we've got a BBW section. We've got a POV section. We've got um, a BTS section, which people are going crazy for. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think yeah, people behind, really... yeah, but yeah, behind the scenes, people just love this shit because you catch bloopers and you catch me in real time, and you get to see me actually filming the yeah. scenes. Which I, think mm. when when you can't see me, people just <clears throat> assume it could be anyone. Yeah, but with the BTS, you can see me filming the scene, so people really like that because they can see my face and my reaction. Now, I want you to speak to this being a woman behind the camera versus a man. Yeah, because um, I remember back in the day when I came in, one of the ladies that used to be a uh, for her own company was Lorel for Busted Baby Dolls, and speak to being a woman behind the camera filming. You know what I'm saying from your ex- yeah, from your experience because it's not often you to hear a woman talk about her working the camera. Yeah, I think for me, I I learned a lot working on different sets that were more hardcore and gonzo. So mm. I learned a lot of camera work there, but I've kind of turned it into my own style. So much mm. so that I shoot not for like the male gaze or the female gaze, but I kind of shoot just to make everyone look as sexy as possible. Our friend Samantha Mack said to us after we shot with her that when she saw the footage, she couldn't believe how amazing she looked because of the way I shot her body. See, I think a woman knows how to make a woman look good, just like exactly. a woman's exactly pussy blood than a man. Sorry, but <laughs> they know what a woman wants because they're a woman, so it yeah. makes sense, you know. Period. So now we get to the part of the show where the pussies go dry, the dicks go left. Let's talk about the business. <laughs> so, you guys have been doing this business 10 years um, as content creators for six, am I correct? Yeah. To get everybody the perspective. Speak about the ups and downs of the money and the misconception that people think that you can just come in and it's popping. And, um, and plus the work behind the camera, which, because people don't realize the filming is the easy part. He's right. getting the sales of the hard part. So speak to that in your mind. So I think the first thing I'll say about people who want to join the industry that think it's an easy job mm-hmm. is Dan has a story. And he always says, I, I do have a story. if you're a guy uh, and you think you can be a porn star, get a circle of your closest friends together, yeah. jerk off in front of them, and come on command. Yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go from nothing to hard. <laughs> Jerk off for like twenty minutes, and then when someone says "come," come in like thirty seconds. Because it's hard work. People think the guys have an easy job; they do not have an easy job. No. no. You know, you're in a room with maybe up to ten other people. Oh yeah, yeah. That that you may not have ever met before. You know, videographer, photographer, sound guys, lighting guys. See, see, yes, yeah, see, he. he the pro pro shoots, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a whole toy different level of pressure. I that's why I ain't never take my ass to Hollywood. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's said, what I'm gonna say. It. Yeah, if you want to be a porn star, it's not as easy as it looks. And then yeah, the business side, you know, there's a lot that has to go on like legally for like all the paperwork, which I totally understand. You want to make sure everything's legit. There's a lot like the editing. That's why I try not to cut because I hate editing. And if I don't cut, I don't need to edit anything. But then you still have to make a trailer. You've got to make it so it's enticing. So people see it, they click on it, they want to come join the website. Then there's the whole aspect of, of working with it uh, for content. If, you, if you're shooting content, you have to upload it to the platforms. You have to make sure all the paperwork gets uploaded to the platforms, the identifications, uh, uh, that you're tagging the correct models, that you have the correct model accounts for all the models and the scenes, uh, uh, You know that, that you have your schedule so that everything is being released when it should. You're not overlapping with other models or having any problems with that. You know, it, it, it's really a lot, a lot of, a lot of work. Yeah. And then on top of that, storing that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because, because it was something I was talking to somebody else. I said, these sites don't take into account. Shit happens. Oh yeah. And, and cause you can, cause I'll never forget uh, when the RZA lost a whole bunch of songs and beats because of a flood. 
right. you know, period. You know, a hard right. drive can can crash or what have you, everything. So, um, when it comes down, who who does the uploading to the site? Who pay attention to the numbers? Oh, that that's all, Suzanne. I'll give full credit over there to Suzanne. Uh, you know, I I, I so she's the brains, you the dick. Uh, she, she's the boss. She 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 runs she runs she runs it. Without her, I I would just be uh, you know. I would just be working behind the scenes and uh, fucking for fun on, on, on set sometimes. But she's the one that really created this and made it into a company for us. Okay, most definitely. So how important is it for y'all to expand your repertoire and your brand, but yet stay on brand? I mean, I, I feel like we just recently expanded so much. We're, uh, we're just trying to build a content base mostly now, like having – uh, you know, a nice, a nice uh, catalog of content going forward. But I would love to continue to expand our uh, our brand, a hundred percent. Yeah, because it's like, um, but that's the evolution of our business, though. Yeah. is to expand. You know, um, because the thing of it is, is that especially with like boy girl or what have you, and adding BDSM or even like fetish, it. it People that do it all have the most chance of making money, you know, period. So, um, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to see where I want to go with this. When it comes to, like, your platforms that y'all have picked, what did you take into account when you picked those platforms? Well, for, for us, we originally started Slut Inspection, the website, um, through Model Centro, because they... Uh, <laughs> really good for like a starter website anyone can any model can sign up you know it's a good way to monetize all your content that you might have on like only fans or something but we kind of outgrew them so we joined full porn network and they run all the back end webmaster all that crap for us so so basically y'all have standalone sites for, for the most part yeah exactly and then we have i mean we each have an only fans yeah with more personal okay. content. Now I really get to ask some questions there. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> Which is better? The website. <laughs> Expound and explain because I've been saying this for the longest, and and I explain to you why after you 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 break it down. So here's the thing: a website has everything mm. laid out for you. You can click on any category that you want, and all of our videos are going to load for that. Um, you pay a small fee to get hundreds of scenes available to you. You know, the monthly subscription is like less than a cup of coffee every day, realistically. Yeah. Um, only fans, they've been adding more features, but basically it's impossible. Like if you sign up to one model's only fans, it's impossible to find all their videos. If their videos are even included, sometimes you have to pay extra for each thing. Yeah. So the, for the customer, the price goes up and up and up and up. With a website, everything's already included. The other thing is the website, we have way broader rules. Yeah, yeah. But we can put up, we can put things, <laughs> like, okay, like for the fisting. You can't put fisting on OnlyFans anymore. Gaping either, yeah. You can't put gaping on, on OnlyFans, yeah. It's true. So it's going to go on the website. OnlyFans won't even allow it. Smoke that over, people. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 just to read that. I've been yeah. saying this for the longest. <clears throat> They're taking the fun out of porn. Mm -hmm. It's becoming too PC. Yep. That is funny to hear that they're making porn PC. Porn was never in the history of this world ever meant to be PC. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's just a matter of restrictions, you know, due to credit card processing and, and all that. You know, the, these companies have fear of... Uh, you know the credit card processing companies coming after them, so it's understandable why they why they have to do what they have to do. But having a standalone but, site allows us a lot of uh, freedom. And that's why I said porn is heading back to the standalone site because when I came in, if you didn't have a porn site, you wasn't considered a porn star. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, period. You got laughed at for having a clip for sale. I remember, dude told me. When, I, when he filmed that scene, I asked him, I said, where you put it up at? You got a website? He's like, no, uh, Clips for Sale. I said, what? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lo and behold, three years later, I have a Clips for Sale. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
But the point being is, I still felt a standing on site was the key. Yeah. Because Massacre and Beast don't give a shit about the standalone sites. Let's be frank, they don't. Right. Because actually, if you want to be honest, it's not Massacre and Beast that making people do the paperwork. It's these sites doing the paperwork they damn self. But I have my theory and I don't feel like putting on my tin hat tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, period. All I'm going to say is, it's mighty fucking funny. Y'all be getting a whole lot of interesting phone calls and text messages from a lot of shit every time y'all upload a new uh, ID 2257, which oh, has yeah. somebody's social security number and ID and address and phone number. I don't need to say no more. Now, yeah. Yeah. now so to me, you're able to do more with the site. And the reason why Mascar don't give a shit about that because really it's about if anybody ever come up with a complaint, they know who to actually go to versus with them two sites they didn't have a clue because some because they didn't for the longest they didn't verify. Exactly. So it's it, it so at the end of the day, once again, you always pay for somebody else's sin in this world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> and so shoot, so how do y'all like how do y'all work through the restrictions? So that that's the thing. The stuff that we shoot, everything goes on the website. We just the stuff that isn't allowed on OnlyFans just doesn't go on OnlyFans. Yeah. But every, I mean, the stuff we put on OnlyFans isn't really the same stuff as the website anyway. It's more like mm. BTS and personal stuff. Whereas the website gets mm. full scenes, full updates. Mm. We're doing like so basically, y'all use the OnlyFans to promote the website. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Everything that we have is is uh, <laughs> driving traffic. Just driving traffic towards the sites. See, people, this is why they're a power couple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's power couple shit. They say, okay, only fans want to kick us off. We just going to use you dumb fuckers to send the people to where we want them to spend the money. Thank you. I use everything. Come again. TikTok. <laughs> I'm selling NFTs now that come with a free subscription to the website. Mm -hmm. I'm doing everything. Now, explain to my listeners the advantage of selling NFTs and why that's the next step for porn. So, what what I'm doing is I'm creating one of a p one of a kind works of art. I guess they're digital works of art uh, using some of our favorite models that we shot recently. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's a collectible item. Like I said, it's one of a kind, and mm -hmm. you get like a little piece of slut inspection history. And then, like, I'm doing an added bonus where they get a free month of the website. And if they have Twitter, I'll follow them on Twitter as a bonus. See, because it's like, to me, Bitcoin um, and uh, I know the Bitcoin, I, 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 I always say this. I said, at some point, porn is going to start fucking with the Bitcoins and the NFT. That's where it's heading to. So our website accepts all kinds of crypto if you want to join our website you can pay with i think like i don't know maybe 20 to 30 different coins right now to join our website with crypto so we are on the crypto train 100 yeah. percent. the thing is, is a lot sorry, of people yeah no a lot of people i think uh like the younger generations they don't mm -hmm. want porn on their credit card bill right. yeah. so crypto is the way to go yeah yeah, because think about OG, you know, saying um, OBJ. <laughs> His contract was crypto. Everybody was like, oh, he's stupid. I'm oh. like, not if that shit pops, buddy. <laughs> he's going to be a billionaire <laughs> laughing at all of you. Oh, and I'll tell you another secret for people that don't want credit cards to show up on their, or the, the porn to show up on their credit cards. If you're like, mm -hmm. you most websites, including ours, you can mm -hmm. use a gift card. Like any yeah. gift card. Yeah. So you yeah, can just so true. go to the shops, get any major brand, like sporting goods stores, like big market stores, and you can use it to buy porn. It's amazing. See, it, it, any way that you want to pay for it, they got you. We're going to take your money any way you want to pay. They got you. <laughs> Yen. <Yeah. laughs> Whatever you want to pay and got them gold, hey, they, 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 hey, they got you. Right. <laughs> That's yeah, what I'll, I'm I'll talking take, about. I'll take gold. I'll take silver. I'll take whatever you want to get. Gas nowadays would be a great one. 
Oh my God! Hey, hey, no, no, that will be gay. So we see y'all dad one hundred dollar gas card. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> that would be gay. <laughs> then people be the next thing you know, you gonna have everybody on Twitter talking about so. Yeah, you see me a gas card? I can see your Dropbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that is so fucking real. So now the question of the night: Y'all are married. Um, I don't, I don't know how pressurable I can get with you people, even though this is uh, just a podcast. Oh, we're 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 open books, you know. Okay, any, any so, so I take it Of course, y'all been together long enough. I think y'all have kids, correct? We do not have kids, actually, just cats, but no, no kids. Oh, y'all suck. This is <laughs> <laughs> not not because y'all really could change the business. You feel what I'm coming from? You know, so. Y'all married the whole night. How do y'all balance relationship and business? We take a lot of time just for ourselves. You know, it's that's really important. Wait, when? What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's the key. Is like the you know making porn and having your own company can kind of take over your life twenty four seven. So we make sure, like we we hang out and like binge watch TV shows yeah. or hang out with the cats. Oh, so yeah, because it's like sometimes it's hard to separate the two, and two also when y'all chasing it so hard, and with success it makes you hunger for more, it makes you work harder. Right, you know, period. So you have to make time for your relationship, you know, period. Um, do y'all ever? What do y'all do on the mental scale with fatigue? Because there's such thing as I call work fatigue, you know, period. What what what's some of the things y'all do to take that mental break from it? Um, Dan, I think just works out. Yeah, that that's pretty much my spot. Uh, cleaning, I like to. I really like to clean. Cleaning, cleaning and working out are two of my big things. Yeah, cleaning can actually help you relax. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, right. it, it, it. when when your apartment is clean and you walk in, you just like feel this like sense of calm come over you. Like, okay, I, you know, I, I I feel mentally clear because my my space is clear. Most definitely, most definitely. So I I just know you you y'all two are doing some major stuff, and also. Uh, you're nominated, am I correct, Dan? Uh, am I or have been nominated? I, I, I have I have been nominated quite a few times. Uh, uh, I don't know if there's anything. I, I don't know if there's anything on the board right now. Right but, now, uh, we're pre-nomming for Expiz Cam Awards. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So we're trying okay. to get him nominated for Male Clip Artist of the Year. Yeah. Now, speak to being nominated because not a lot of people get nominated. <laughs> for an award, especially for what I saw at AVN, dude, oh. that's that's major. Oh yeah, that's major. Uh, that's yeah. that's Oscar shit. Yeah, that's uh, point Oscar shit. You feel me? Yeah, that that was uh, uh after my first year as a performer, I was up for uh, a best male newcomer, uh, which which was amazing, you know, and uh, all the the press, the interviews, like like, and it it just speaks volumes to like people seeing that you're putting in the work, you know, like. It, it's just so, such an honor to be to be nominated, and uh, uh, I've been nominated across multiple different award award shows at this point, and I I, I couldn't be happier. And and uh, you know, it's just I'm, I'm honored to to be where I am. I wouldn't, you know, ten years ago I wouldn't have even thought this that any of this would be possible. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like um, because I'm, it's certain things when you're in a profession, to even be recognized whether you win the award or not, is major. Exactly. And also puts a spotlight on you. And also, it it makes you get more... A, a, it, it, it helps you attract more. Exactly. You know, man. You know, period. So it's like, each time you got nominated, did you notice a, another level that you hit? Uh... I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I feel like getting nominated, it puts, it puts you in the, in the mindset of, uh, you know, you're doing a good job. So it, it, it builds up that confidence, you know, and with confidence comes, uh, uh, you know, what you put out, you get back. So if you're putting out confidence, people can almost feel that. So, so it, it just kind of like, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy almost. The more confident you are, 
the better you do, the better you do, the more you're seen doing your thing, and then it kind of snowballs. Yeah, that's that's a nice snowball. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, not that snowball, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, you shoot, but but the last question I'm gonna give y'all because I don't get to talk to straight up married couples that's, that's doing it to the level they all doing it. Sure. What's the difference between your marriage before porn and after porn? Ooh, I'm gonna let you answer. I ask the hard questions, baby. We keep you real on the smokers' lounge. Let's go. Okay, so this is gonna sound crazy, but I think our marriage is stronger. I agree. I think shooting porn, working together, has made our marriage stronger than ever. I, and I think there's more trust too. Like you yeah. know, like 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 the fact that I'm I'm out doing what I'm doing. You know, like there has to be. We had to reach such a level of trust that was beyond anything that we had had previously to that. See, now that smoke that over. <laughs> <laughs> So y'all tell everybody where they can spend some money on y'all. Come to slutinspection.com. Less than a cup of coffee a day. And tons of porn. Mm, say no more. So I definitely would love to bring y'all back to the show. i love oh, to yeah. make y'all smoke buddies. So will y'all be my smoke buddies? Absolutely. Anytime. Most ever. So we'll be bringing them back on the Smokers Lounge as well as the Premium Smoke Room. I'm talking about the Premium Smoke Room. We're talking about exclusive subscriber-based content for a premium podcast plus an extra premium episode every week. $4.99 a month. Do the count. That's a lot of fucking content I'm giving y'all for very cheap. So check that out. And I want to say once again, thank y'all for coming to the lounge. And I can't wait to bring y'all back. And to the listeners, you know how we always end this. Life is a learning experience. What's the point of the experience if you didn't learn anything? Smoke is over. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, how you doing? Let me tell you about a great deal. Why don't you come on over to the premium smoke room? There ain't no smoke like premium smoke. I'm talking about four premium podcasts. I'm talking about Miss Spit Queen and the Porn Rap Star. I'm talking about Pilgrim on Wrestling. I'm talking about causing havoc with Princess Havoc, as well as the Read Daily Report. Oh, I'm sorry, five STO Dark. Plus, also extra premium episodes for some of the hottest ladies and gents in the business of porn. And all this for $4.99 a month. I'm talking about five to six extra episodes a week on top of the free shit that you get. So do the math. Great deal. Only on Spotify, only on Anchor. Come check me out. Come catch this premium smoke.